Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Patrick Mahomes, nice division home playoff win versus Jaguars. We are breaking it down. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder, the Quarterback School Patreon community, really the bedrock, the foundation of this channel. It's a great way to support the channel if you join and become a member. Not only are you supporting the channel, you also get a bunch of additional Quarterback School content. So if you enjoy the channel, you will love the Quarterback School Patreon community. I sincerely appreciate the support. It's never been cheaper. There's never been more content available over there. So if you're interested, check out the link in the video description. As for this video, let's get into it. All right, Patrick Mahomes, the Chiefs rolling early, battling through injury late. Love this first one here. The pre-snap communication for the protection, the feel, the ability to climb in the pocket, just a little jump throw. Nothing much, nothing to see here. Pretty sure Kelsey just settles this thing down too. But again, check out the point from Mahomes here early. He's pointing out the edge pressure to the sniffer. 83 there on our left. He's coming across in the split flow action. You got to come all the way across. Here it comes. Mahomes sees it up in the pocket. And let's just jump and get smacked in the back while we're at it. Just an awesome play. The fact that he makes this look so smooth, the communication, the ability to move in the pocket, the ability to find the throwing angles. Again, Kelsey, you know, assuming whatever he has here, he just feels that zone. He sets that thing down because you've got the in coming right to him, right? You wouldn't usually have that speed. That's spacing up top. So he just settles, and Mahomes finds him with a jump throw. Craziness. I love it. Again, the communication outstanding, the feel for the pocket, the ability to buy enough time here by essentially going up, and then watch as he gets smacked too. Boom, in the back. So not only is he jump throwing in a pocket, you know, I think the phone booth analogy back in the day used to be a good one. Nowadays, nobody knows what the hell that means. This is tighter than a phone booth. He's getting grabbed, smacked in the back. Just throws a strike to Kelsey. Awesome. Next one here. A little RPO. Crazy arm angle. This is a bit of a unique RPO for me here as far as the first level zone read. Bubble slant. Pretty rare to see this. So we're reading 44 as a conflict defender. But really, we have to read 33 with the second level throw. Second window slant as well. So there's a lot going on here. Let's first talk through just kind of what's going on with the run play here. So with the run, the conflict defender, 44, right here, the edge player, C-gap player. We're going to run some iteration of zone this way. Wide zone, inside zone, doesn't matter. Up top, we're going to get a bubble by the number one, pretty rare. And a slant, although they do run a bunch of bubbles by the number one late in the game here to kind of four-minute offense this thing. The crazy thing here, or the more difficult thing than normal on a first-level RPO, usually on first-level RPOs, you aren't going to throw it down the field. So you're throwing something at or near the line of scrimmage, at or behind the line of scrimmage usually. I think when you get in first-level RPOs and you start throwing second-level throws, meaning linebacker-type depths, it's significantly harder because you inevitably incorporate a second-level defender. So really, we've got the first-level defender who we're reading, the C-gap player, and then this second window throw, because the original slant is not here. So you have to wait for it to get past the linebacker type to hit it in the second window. So one more time for the people in the back. First level RPO impacted by the second level defender here because we're trying to get this slant in the first window. It's not there. Second window is there. It's wild. And we'll just do it sidearm to get wrapping around someone's a first round pick. First round number one overall pick. Smooth. I mean, not a whole lot of people can do this, y'all. First level, no. Wrap it around, second window. <laughs> and just for fun, the arm angle. Turn into, whew, and it's right on him. Strike, awesome play, awesome design. Next one here, third and six. A little scramble to Kelsey at the bottom. You know, how you let Kelsey beat you in the red zone on third down, I have no idea. I really don't, and I'm... I want to see a team come out and just put two people on him at the line of scrimmage, especially when he's not the motion guy. So we'll talk about it from the wide, but it's just Patrick Mahomes. Creative, arm angles, getting tackled, people around him, doesn't matter. Thing of beauty. So for me here, normally, you know, again, we talk a lot about offensive architecture and choices 
by the kind of play creators. Where does he normally line up? Okay, normally, I would say he's usually guesstimating here. I'm sure someone could run the numbers. He's normally the guy who does the walk around motion. Why do you do that walk around motion? Well, there's a number of different reasons. But probably the number one thing for me is that it eliminates the line of scrimmage bump. Okay, so you can still get jacked when you're in motion, but it's a hell of a lot harder. Plus, they don't know where you're going to be, so they've got to kind of travel with you. But if he's up at the line of scrimmage, okay, he being Kelsey, is up at the line of scrimmage, and I'm a defensive coordinator in the league, I'm putting someone on his outside eye, and I'm putting someone on his inside eye, and they're going to bench press, double bench press, four hands into Kelsey's chest. And he's just going to be a punt gunner. And we'll take our chances with everyone else for me, especially in the red zone. You just can't get be I, I, Okay. Okay. I'm off the rant. I feel like I do it every Chiefs video, though. Red zone, third down, double team Kelsey, please. But Patrick Mahomes, I mean, even when it's not there, he finds a way. He's been doing this consistently. His feel, his ability to create, his consistency with this, it's simply. Not matched from anyone else in the league. Awesome vision as well. Accuracy. First down. Next one here. A little old school T-counter boot to the bottom. Trying to get the back in the flat. No. Corner. No. Late. Kind of bang flat. Yes. Touchdown. Great design. Again, reverse pivot out. Mahomes does a really nice job. I think he uses the ball handling that I prefer. No fake. Just kind of turn. Let the action be the fake. So what is this play? You see a lot of teams run this play. This is We're trying to fake it to him. So the reverse pivot from the quarterback, we're reversing out, but we're not really faking it. We're just always staying on the run. And then we're trying to get the back in the flat. That's number one. Okay, there's a bunch of different things you can do here on the edge. What they do is they ask Kelsey to secure the edge, basically reach the edge. Then we're going to run a corner by the inside number two. And then we're going to split flow action, the number three. The back's not there, so no, no, and then Kelsey secures the edge. That's why it's called the bang. So you bang right here, and then you're late in the flat. You kind of run like a check down. You can just find the space. And there's simply nobody better in the league right now than finding space and a quarterback connection, Mahomes, Kelsey, to be able to do this. No to the flat, no to the corner, yes. Touchdown. And again, Kelsey, not double teamed, red zone. I don't understand it but they keep making you pay. It's too easy, way too easy. Great job from Mahomes. Next one here, third and seven. This is a crazy scramble and throw up top to the number one on a deep hook. A little bit of a weird turn by that number one on the deep hook for me to turn to the left. But this is Patrick Mahomes, again, just making a play out of structure. It seems like it's so routine that you almost get kind of lulled into thinking it's normal. This not normal. <laughs> The calmness and the ability to just contort your body arm angle with the vision to deliver it. I think I just I can't recall. I'm sure there have been other guys in the league that just do it so well. I mean, this is going to your left, climbing up in the pocket, you're gonna get hit, and flicking back across the middle of the field. Now it's a great catch, too. It really is. But man, this is just this is it's the norm, but I don't want it to be the norm for this channel, for this crew. This is special stuff, man. And he does it all the time, seemingly. Crazy. Halftime. You dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. It lets you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I certainly appreciate the support for the channel. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, great group, the foundation, the bedrock of this channel. If you're interested in becoming a member, check out the link in the video description. We also have quarterback school courses, really the premium content available through the channel, deep, deep dives on all of my favorite football subjects, RPOs, pass protection, how to beat every coverage, tempos. We even have an entire offensive framework. So if you're interested in any and all of those, the links are in the video description. And then finally, we have additional free resources available. We've got a free course on the passing quick game. We've got a pass pro quiz, test your knowledge. A lot of experts out there I hear. And then we've got a play calling tool, also kind of a fun way to be able to interact and learn how to beat every coverage based on your personnel. So if you're interested in any and all of those things, you can find them in the video description. I appreciate the support for the channel. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here, third quarter. Now we're battling through some injuries. 
We've got an ankle thing. We're in play action, 13 personnel. This to me is the Kelsey effect with the over coming from up top, the post at the bottom, and Kelsey on kind of a sit. The check down really matters here too on as well on the design. But Kelsey, in my opinion, distorts these coverages and can create some space for the others. And so what I'm talking about design-wise here, first of all, 13 personnel for all the people in the back, one back, three tight ends, two up here, one right here. And I don't know Kansas City's personnel, but I'm just assuming that's the case. Those are tight ends up top. What we're going to get here for the Kelsey effect is he's going to run like a little sit right here. Uh, normally that would be a kind of a meh route at best for anything. It's going to be paired with a post and an over. Okay, There's nothing new about those blue lines. Post over is about as generic as you get with a little check down back here from the back. But watch what happens with the defense here and Kelsey. So someone looks like they're locked onto him, almost like it's like a man match specialty vibe. That's fine. I love stuff like that. But everybody else here can't get lost as well. We've got to be getting some depth if we're going to be playing zone coverage here and make life tough on these overs. We can't like be screaming up to checkdowns. We can't be squeezing checkdowns and creating just massive voids on the back end. I mean, this is a huge space. For 13 personnel, <laughs> I mean, it's craziness. So just watch the effect that Kelsey has at the bottom. So it certainly looks like five is matching to him. But there's no curl defender. we got to get some depth here. There's no depth to the curl defender. We've got two people on the check down. We're only rushing three. And we've got someone that wide open in drop eight. I, I just don't understand. And so I just feel like Kelsey sometimes, not only does he certainly make an impact for the Chiefs, but he also impacts it even when he doesn't get the ball. He's distorting coverages, creating space for everyone else. Really nice design. Next one here. Now, I know we're dealing with some injuries, no doubt about it. And this has happened in every game, okay, qualifier. But this is one of those ones you expect Kelsey and Mahomes to hook up pretty consistently. This is about a, as bad of a miss as you'll ever see for Mahomes, hurt or not. Okay, Now, he's certainly showing some significant toughness, even hanging, being back out there in the second half. But I really like this design, and this is there. Yeah, this is an Andy Reid special for me. This kind of like, I'll come on into this space, and Mahomes almost tries to like slow him down. You end up kind of reading this corner out here. Now, what's he paired with? To me, this is what a lot of West Coast people will call a B-line. Okay, The drawing is not as good as the route. It's a straight line. Like if I had a ruler, straight line right through there. And then you usually pair it with something else on the backside coming across. So you've got two things going to the left with this kind of like post clear. It's a bit of a unique route, hybrid-ish route for me. But really, we're just reading that corner up top. If he's going to get any depth and take away that corner scissors element of this, well, then we're going to have that check down. Again, the check down is really important to be able to pull these underneath defenders up so they loose with their eyes and make them pay behind them in coverage. So watch that route up top. See that kind of straight line? He's not even looking, right? Like he doesn't look till he's 25 yards down the field. Kelsey comes out in the corner, and it's there it's just a little bit behind. So even as good as the Mahomes played when he was playing, playing fresh and playing hurt, you know, just a little tick off there could have been another big play. Next one here, second and one. Now we get a double move. Okay, we got double moves all over the place up top. This to me is a back shoulder on a double move. It's good coverage. It's just a better ball. It's a nice catch too, biting him up. But watch Mahomes here. He's going to pump to our left, his right. He knows where he's going the whole time. Pump go super decisive that is a laser seed of a throw as well now normally you're going to pump why would you pump the middle field player here you catch middle field closed you want to take your drop on these double moves you know you've got all sorts of time right it's going to take forever for this thing to develop well you're pumping this middle field player to hold him over here so that you can drop this thing like a serious bomb down the field and he's not going to make a play on it you're not pumping him to throw a back shoulder. This back shoulder is just reaction. It's, hey, the corner is over the top of our route. He's behind him. So what do you do? You just throw it right at him. Now, easier said than done, especially like this late down the field. You know, there's nothing quick or timely. Usually back shoulders are kind of like fades that you can put towards the sideline. This takes time to develop down the field. Arm strength, vision, connection, 
Y'all, it's not even close. I don't want to hear any crazy conversations about someone who's not the top quarterback besides Patrick Mahomes. It's a laser. It's awesome. Last one here, another touchdown pass. Again, pretty wild play from Mahomes. Get a little fast forward motion here. Just a one-legged jump pass. <laughs> Great vision. Kelsey's getting doubled. They're bringing five. 5-0, great pass protection as well. Five one-on-one -on -one blocks. Look at this pass protection. I mean, nobody around him. Up in the pocket, one-legged jump pass. <laughs> oh, look at this throw. He's hurt. I mean, he's essentially off the ground there. Wild throw just to a wide-ass open guy. High back five. Unbelievable vision. Great play construction here. We're going to get fast four motion, right? So this is that tear, gash motion, whatever you want to say. What it does here in man coverage is it makes them declare it's man. If someone runs, well then you know it's man to man. Right here, they're gonna rush five, okay? Five rushers, and really normally in five rushers man coverage, you'd think in man free, meaning that there's no hole player. But down here in the red area, you really don't even need a post player either. That's why you don't see a whole lot of post coverage down here. So this guy actually ends up kind of being a double on Kelsey. So we've got outside leverage, inside leverage down. So trying to disguise the double a little bit, but really that's what it is. These two are locked in on Kelsey. Well, then we've got one-on-ones everywhere else, right? One-on-one, 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 one-on-one with whoever runs with the back. Watch this release by the number two. So if you're one-on-one -on -one and you're on your own, normally you would be off a tick and inside, kind of like we are right here. Kind of like we look like we are out here. You cannot get gapped at the line of scrimmage whoop, and then allowed to just run away to the middle of the field. It's a really nice job. Okay, we're getting we're winning all over the place. We're winning in pass protection. Quarterback's winning with his vision. You know, they're trying to take Kelsey away. Great. We'll just find the wide ass open guy in the back of the end zone. Just an awesome job from Mahomes and company. This is so impressive being hurt, being nicked up, moving like this, making this type of throw with this type of vision. He just does it consistently. Just the best of the best. So that is a wrap. Patrick Mahomes, the Chiefs, divisional, nice home win versus the Jaguars. Early, just magical. You know, Patrick Mahomes, the offensive creativity, Andy Reid and company, how they're designing and scheming, structuring their offensive plays to create chunks down the field. And then Patrick Mahomes just doing what he seemingly does every time he's out on the field, whether he's healthy or not. Creative unbelievable kind of feel, vision, arm angles, arm strength, ball location, accuracy, damn near every trait you could possibly list. So for me, love watching it. Love watching the off-platform creativity coupled with kind of the offensive architecture, the structure, the play calling, the layering, how Kelsey operates in the middle of the field, how defenses are trying to kind of try to take him away based on where they are down in distance, kind of situational ball, and just can't. All of those things to me are a lot of fun to dive into. Hopefully you enjoyed it. It's going to be fascinating to see how the Bengals come at this Chiefs offense. I'm excited to see what it looks like and what Mahomes looks. Hopefully he's good enough, healthy enough to make this kind of his best effort. I certainly enjoyed breaking this thing down. Thank you to hang until the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.